It's fired up for this Duke basketball team, Dick. Brad, it should be a beauty. 22,000 on hand to watch this game back in a moment. News exclusive presentation of Championship Week is presented by 7-Up. Are you an un? And in part by Isuzu. We don't make cars because life's too big for cars. And by First Union, your guide to the financial world. Center for the renewal of the renewal of the greatest rivalry in college basketball, Duke and North Carolina. Let's take a look at the starting lineups. First for the Blue Devils of Duke, Trajan Langdon, shooting eye has returned. He is back on top of the ACC in three-point shooting percentage, hitting 44 percent of his shots. You notice Shane Battier with that high ankle sprain does not start. Burgess does. For North Carolina, Adam Mola Okalija, the senior, knew he had to step up this year, and he did. He became a great leader, leads this club in both points and rebounds. Bill Guthridge has won more games in his first two years than any other coach in NCAA history. Now 56 and 11. That's an amazing number when you think about it, and you look at Mike Krzyzewski. An unbelievable run. Think about this, Mike. 30 and 1 in the ACC over the last two years. They're only L. You and I sat here. They were blown out last year on this court by North Carolina. And they are one shot away from being undefeated this year. That last second loss against Cincinnati. Last team to go undefeated was 1987, North Carolina. So look at Shane Battier on the bench with a high ankle sprain. They'll really miss him. He's such a winner, Mike offensively and defensively but if he is troubled at all it is the right decision because if you play him tonight and he gets hurt you could lose him for the rest of the year that's what Mike said he said I don't want to take a injury that can heal in four days and make it become a four week injury Duke controlling the ball senior night it's great to see Scott Williams on the floor and Brad Frederick both seniors Trajan Langdon, fall away jumper, tip won't go. A tradition here, start the seniors for the first minute or two. Let them get a feel of the excitement of playing in a game of this magnitude. Haywood against Burgess. Jump hook, got it. That's big. If they can get him effective on the interior and score it down inside. Remember, Mike, in that first matchup, he was not a factor in the lane. Well, great move to get free underneath and scores tremendous quickness on the spin. He is one of those warriors. We've said it all year long. Carwell and Battier, really unselfish, team-oriented players. Carwell only averages 9.7 points a game. You get the feeling if he had to get 30, he could. He comes, he comes up in big games. Haywood on the nice pass from senior Scott Williams, who has scored one bucket this year. That's how little he has played. He's going to feel like a million dollars with that pass, and I know his dad does. He's in the crowd here. Roy Williams. Offensive foul on Elton Brand. Roy Williams in the crowd, the Kansas coach, proudly watching his son. There he is. Scott Williams doesn't get a whole lot of PT, but there's a pass. He'll always remember the jam by Mr. Hayward. Slam, jam, bam. He's not going to sleep tonight thinking about that pass. Haywood comes up high this time, and Okalija, who has really good range on his shot, is now being guarded by Elton Brand. He's been an all ACC performer this year, Okalija. Solid inside and outside, very versatile. Cotto with time running down on the shot clock, doesn't get the roll, and Brand clears for the Blue Devils. Avery pushes it ahead to Carrowell. Williams cut him off, then got some help, but Carrowell scores it anyway. Four early for Carrowell. Carrowell has always given North Carolina trouble. He really excels in transition, and it's hard to believe that he only averages nine a game when you look at his game, but that's because he's so unselfish. Away from the ball, this is going to be a holding foul inside. In fact, Carrowell is second on a team, Mike, in assists. 
Burgess picks up the foul. Well, the seniors go off, they get a hug. They played high school together in Lawrence, Kansas, Frederick and Williams. Bob Frederick, the athletic director of Kansas, proud of his son and Roy Williams. There he is. First guy to get the 300 games in winning in 11 years. That's the quickest anyone ever got there. This rate, Bill Guthridge will pass him. <laughs> That's an amazing number, though. 300 wins in 11 years. That's a backdoor cut. Coda trying to give himself a little space. Couldn't hit the shot. Lang with a good rebound. Coda for three. They came to play, Mike. Get ready. Get ready. Duke's going to have to have their A game to get out of here 16 and 0, baby. Most of it, I think, on the shoulders of Ed Coda. If he shoots well and penetrates well as he has so far, they will keep it close. Remember, they missed Shane Battier on the point of that press. He's so effective. He's exactly. Defensively there. Brand. Remember, Brand has the wingspan of a seven-footer, but Haywood is a seven-footer. And remember, Brand did not dominate in the lane in that first matchup. Coda too strong for Lang. Everybody says Ed Cota's got to work on his perimeter shot, but he's a 40% shooter from out there. And there's the guy from out of New York City, knocking it down, bringing a smile to many of the Carolina faithful here tonight. Cota, who had really struggled from long range his first two years, shooting only 31%, is over 40 this year. Taman Domzowski is in. And Taman Domzowski immediately converts the miss. He's their ninth player in their rotation. He was a McDonald's High School All-American. A lot of people feel in situations if he got playing time, he can really be effective. Duke within one. That one's knocked away by Brand. It's a two-on-one. Avery with a left hand, and Duke gains the lead. William Avery has that unique ability to get to the basket, change his direction. He's so strong taking the ball to the goal. Dick, we talked about in the first game the fact that North Carolina's turnovers didn't hurt them a lot. That kind of turnover will. Exactly. If you allow them to get that turnover where they can get a transition, Duke's the best in America in converting. Langdon goes down on the floor, and I believe they're going to call a foul. There's the block shot by Brand, and here's Avery. What a nice play. Changes direction, freezes the defender, lays it on the glass, and converts. Best backward in basketball, I think, in college is Avery and Langdon. They do not call a foul. They call it a uh, jump ball situation, and the possession arrow will give it to the heels. The three, Haywood. I'll tell you, Haywood's ready to play, Mike. He is becoming a monster inside. They cannot handle him. He's got six points already early in the game. And Carolina has regained the lead by one. So much size when you look at North Carolina with Lang and with Haywood and Okalaja. Trajan Langdon for three. Too strong. Brand. Nice offensive rebound. Trajan Langdon could not miss the other night against the ball. He had 25, was so effective. He's such a leader, such a beautiful young guy. We've got a timeout on the court. Haywood making a statement early, and Carolina leads by one. Position and gets the angle. We're going to watch him on the interior. He's going to come off the screen. He's going to be in this area, release, and go to the basket. Now watch him right here. Now the shot comes up. Freeze it. Right here. Freeze it. See how he's going to get inside position on this defender and go to the goal. We're going to watch him right here. Now he's on the inside. Look at Haywood, great inside position, the long arms, the seven-foot space eater takes it up, Jam City. North Carolina's had a history of developing great big men. Brad Darty's with us tonight, and Brad, you didn't need a whole lot of developing. You were certainly <laughs> far more athletic coming out of high school than a lot of these guys, but Bill Guthridge has done a great job with some guys who, when they got here, couldn't play. Bill Guthridge is a great teacher of the big man fundamentals of the game. He especially emphasizes footwork. And the one player I played with, Warren Martin, who came here, not as a very good athlete, not a very good player, left as a solid defender, a solid post player in the ACC, just through the hard work of Bill Guthridge. Very good with the big people. Back not, to you guys. Not only a compliment to those big guys like Serge Swicker uh, and Bill Guthridge, but to the players themselves, the guys who really worked so hard. Salvadori as well. Remember yeah. Salvadori? 
Avery kicks it out to Langdon. Shot clock at nine. The three go. Frazier Langdon, the leading three-point shooter in the ACC, gets his first bucket. Mike, if he's allowed to square his shoulders to the basket, he's almost automatic. you got to hope to force him to where he doesn't square his body in shooting the basketball. Duke by two. Man-to-man -man defense by Duke. Their trademark. Pressure the basketball. Deny. Give help on the inside. Haywood lost it on the way up. Pretty good defense by Taman Domzowski. That's the one area that he has to improve a little bit more on his hands on the inside and really reduce the number of times he turns the ball over on the interior. Three turnovers by the heels. Only one for Duke so far. Well, see, North Carolina's defense is not going to turn you over a lot. Well, that kind of turnover wouldn't hurt you as much. Elton Brand really forced that one up, laying with the ball. Got it away from Domzowski. I think Elton's having problems with the size of uh, Mr. Uh, Hay Haywood on the inside. He did the first game. Dakota able to penetrate, lost it on the way up. Lang so quick. I'll tell you, Lang has really improved. That diaper dandy's getting better and better. He's got outstanding ability in that low block inside. He's going to become a special player here at North Carolina. Another one of the talented freshmen in a young, young league. Carrollwell had a toe on the line just short. Brand, another offensive rebound. He's got great mobility, Brand. He's really worked on his footwork. Avery, who has developed a terrific long-range shot, buries a three. He has five. He had eight threes against Florida earlier this year, so you know he's capable. And in one game also, Trajan Langdon had seven. So they got a dynamite duo that can shoot the trifecta. One point this year, Avery passed Langdon as the top three-point shooter in the ACC. He has since fallen back to fifth. Nice when you got a one-two combination like that. Too much paper with the ball. Didn't play the first game. Had mononucleosis, Jason Staples. Oh, Kalijah. Nice drive to the goal. Breakdown by Duke defensively. No one closed off the driving angle. The first bucket for the 6'9 senior from Berlin, Germany. Carowell with a runner. Nice soft touch, and Carowell has half a dozen. He's missed the tenacity. I just love Chris Carowell. If you're going to win a national championship, you have to have people like Carowell on your club. Avery matched up now with Coda. Coda trying to strip him, take him one on one, shake and bake. Coda gets inside, got some defensive help from Domsowski, who has really helped off the bench tonight. Nice having a guy like that as your ninth man. Langdon rims out on him. Coda on the run. It's a two on two. Oh, Kalijah. Uh -oh. Contact uh -oh. no whistle. Hello. Yes, sir. Coda and Kalijah, the experienced players. The senior rises and the crowd erupts. Carolina does not get many easy buckets. They're not a great running team. They don't have the quickness they've had in the past with Carter and Jameson. Domzowski over Lang. Short. And Domzowski called for a push. Adamola Okalaja putting it to the deck now. Taking the ball up strong to the basket. No one rotated back to give any help. And now we watch him in transition. Catches it from Coda, and he knows where he's going. He's finalizing that, baby. Little dipsy dude, Dunkaroo. Langdon fortunate he didn't come out of that play with a foul as well. Duke's going to have to have their A game to win their 16th tonight, Mike. This Carolina team is focused and is playing well. Donald Curry, number 22, is in for the first time. Nice pass. First sticker misses the jump hook. Bosco Eftemov in for the first time. He had the offensive rebound. Here's Curry. Really doesn't want to shoot. He has struggled so much. He has really had a tough making the adjustment for football to basketball. Maggetti is on Okalaja. Now Curry against Nate James as both teams go deep. Bad pass by Curry. Tries to dump it off to Burstaker. Jump ball situation. When you talk about size, there aren't many colleges that can bring in guys like Eftemov from Burstaker off the bench right. with great size to replace people like Haywood. As you look at Bill Guthridge, 56 and 11. And We've got a timeout on the court. 11.27 to go first half. Number one by one. Have played the Blue Devils 15 and 1 a year ago. Their only loss at Carolina, trying to go 16 and 0. No one's ever done that. And here are the undefeated teams in conference, led by North Carolina in 57. 
Duke also did it. Carolina a couple of other times. South Carolina once, NC State under Norm Sloan did it back to back in 73 74. But since Florida State joined the league, no one has ever gone 16 0. Shane Battier held out tonight as a precaution because of that high ankle sprain. They really didn't want to take the chance and perhaps lose him for a couple of weeks, maybe the rest of the season. And I think that's a great decision by Duke to protect that young man instead of risk him tonight. Duke just turned the basketball over. Where they miss Shane Battier is on a defensive pressure at the point of their press. Also, his rebounded ability, which can help to neutralize the size of North Carolina. Curry tries the scoop shot. Missed it, but the first sticker is there for the follow. The size is really bothering Duke here tonight, Mike. Remember, they out-rebounded Duke in the first matchup at a margin of better than 10. Maggetti. Domzowski bangs in there, got the rebound blocked by Burstecker, but a foul underneath. Burstecker showing a little aggressiveness on the inside. He's a young guy who they're just hoping it keeps getting better and better. Remember, you can't teach size, and when you're 6'11", you got a chance to be a player. Especially if you have great work ethic and you got teachers, and certainly in North Carolina, as Brad Doherty can attest to, they got outstanding teachers with Phil Ford, Pat Sullivan, David Hanner, and Bill Guthrie. Foul was on first sticker. Domzowski is a 70% free throw shooter. Misses the first. This place is alive tonight. I'll tell you, something about that Duke jersey brings out the best of the North Carolina fans. This is another one. Keep in mind, the Blue Devils have not won here since 1991. North Carolina has had their number. Eftemoff was a banger. Wow. Jump hook. I'll tell you, Mike, when those kind of shots are falling, Something miraculous might be happening. Somehow that hand, which has not put up the most prettiest looking shots all year, throws up a beauty. Oh, Rick, that hits the class and goes in. Oh, oh interference. Burns just got it on the rim. It's overruled. Yes, sir. Good call by Frank Scagliata. Look at Mike Krzyzewski. Got a phenomenal job. Got to watch up the ball on the inside. Missed the first 18 games. He's a low post player. Scoring on the interior. Now we're going to watch Burgess with a little interference up on the top. Can't play with that ball up on a cylinder in college basketball. Carolina by three as we approach the 10 minute mark in the first half. Dangerous pass there. No, I'll just make a general comment. Max Owens in the lane. He doesn't get the roll. He's had a groin problem. Owens, a guy that gives him some perimeter play. He and Cable share that number two guard slot. Hey, what about Vince Quarter? What a job he's doing in the NBA. To think about, he could have been back in the uniform here along with Jameson. Would have been a rather scary group, wouldn't wow. it? Wow. Langdon. Not his shot. Oh, that shot right there. Here comes Curry. Langdon got back, did a nice job to prevent the bucket, but he'll draw the foul. That's Curry at his best in the open court, utilizing that great speed. He's Mr. Electricity on the football field. They think he may become ultimately the best quarterback ever to play at North Carolina. Take a look at him right here. But it's so difficult to make that adjustment coming from that football field after the bowl season to the basketball hardwood. Well, Dick, I'm not sure if you would agree, but I think this young man, as great an athlete as he is, is a football player. I think he's a football player trying to play basketball. So far, it's not getting done. I could agree with you, Mike. There's no doubt about it. That's the impression I have looking at him. I think in high school, he dominated because of his athletic ability. But I really believe when you watch his game, it is definitely not a game that is basketball oriented. And North Carolina has a 12-6 advantage in rebounding so far. The 15 foul by Duke as Burgess picks up his second. And you saw Curry shooting those free throws. Those, those puppies weren't even close. He's such a great kid. He's such a got a great positive attitude. But it's so difficult to make that transition. Look at Lang working on the inside. The ball comes right to him. Gets fouled. This freshman really knows how to play down on the interior. Really worked hard over the summer to gain some weight and strength. He certainly has tremendous quickness. And he missed them both. Four straight opportunities at the line for the heels. They come up empty. Take a look at the rebounds right now. Two to one ratio. 
doesn't shock us. North Carolina has been a dominant team on the glass. Duke also was out-rebounded big by Michigan State. That's a team, I think, that could create problems for Duke if they ever had to play in the NCAA tournament. So athletic, and Mateen Cleaves. Grand, double team. Avery for three. See, Avery makes you pay for the double team. As soon as you give that kind of attention to Brand on the interior, he's open on that wing, and he'll knock that shot in. We're tied at 19. Max Owens, that's a tough pass for him to handle. Down around his ankles. A bad pass the other way, and Curry with the interception. Curry anticipated really well. Trying to cross over against Langdon. When he was in high school, his quickness would get him by everybody. Oh, yeah, he you just, come up to this level, you're not getting by a lot of guys. See, he dominated. He was a step above the competition. So he can make that transition from football to basketball. Curry. Shot clock is down to 12. Haywood with a jump hook. Too strong. The rebound. Here come the Blue Devils on the run with Langdon. What really impresses me with Duke all year long is how unselfish they are. There's an example of it right there. Backdoor cut, Avery moving without the basketball. The great look by the All-American brand. They are so unselfish. Everything about them is we, 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 not I. Nice cut by Avery. He has 10 points so far. Duke regains the lead. It's been a seesaw battle from the beginning. Haywood backing in on Brand. They had a tough angle, and Brand stopped it. Look at, Look at this guy run. Look at him handle the basketball, a big guy. Maggetti. Maggetti trying to shoot the perimeter shot. I would utilize his ability to get to the basket. He really has explosiveness. He's got those great legs, and he should take the ball to the goal, Maggetti, and get it to transition. They'll need his scoring tonight with their injury situation. Nice spin move, and then the miss, and a foul underneath. Well, a little bit out of control by Curry. See, I think Curry would be a very good college basketball player if he had time to really concentrate on the game and didn't play football. Haywood picks up his second personal. Number one leads by a bucket. But Brad Doherty, Brad, you've seen this act before with the heels dominating the backboards. Well, I think what's going on, what's happening so well for North Carolina is that they've been able to come off the bench and match Duke's intensity. All year long, Duke has been able to substitute and push away from teams. Max Owens has come in. Curry's come in. They've done a great job with their substitution patterns. Capel coming into the ballgame. They really match the in intensity of Duke. Here's a holding foul before the ball is inbounded. And they've got Ed Cota. That's See, his second. Emotional leader. Maggetti remains on the floor for Mike Krzyzewski. Nice try. Pass away. Bucket in the foul. See, that's what I said a little bit earlier, Mike. He's got to utilize his ability to get to the basket. And there's an example. Gets in triple threat position where he can shoot the jumper, can make the pass or drive, and he explodes down the lane. Spots an opening on the inside as they're trying to deny the ball to Brand on the interior. Why they're playing Brand Tiff. I look at he and Haywood. I mean, there's a little wrestling match. In fact, Monday night is wrestling here. Rick Flair and company are coming into this building. Yeah, but that was real there. Oh, yeah. No question. <laughs> I could get hurt for that, too. Uh, uh, Biggest lead for either team. Blue Devils by four. And Okalijah caressing his eye. He got a whack. So far, we have not seen what an lethal spurts by Duke. Remember, they're very capable of running off big, big spurts. Okalijah leaned into one and didn't get it. Langdon with another rebound. Houses it out to Avery. He had a 26-0 spurt against Clemson recently. Carowell is short. He one of the reasons Duke gives it up more is that Langdon has really struggled. Hit only one out of six from the floor. Carowell forced that shot right there. Didn't make the extra pass. They normally do in their offensive set. The other thing, Dick, is Elton Brand hasn't hit a field goal. They're still up by four. They've really done a great job keeping the ball away from Brand, North Carolina. This will be a hold on yes, the The Tar Heels not getting any second chance opportunities. Like they got to come up with the score, get some screens. 
Get the ball inside to Hayward. See, Hayward was the guy that was giving him problems. They're going to try to get him some punches on the box. Oh, Kalijah cut off by McGetty. There it is. Get the ball to Mr. Hayward. Thank you. Thank you, Brendan. Hayward with eight as he got past Burgess. You got to take advantage of that size. McGetty walks. Five turnovers by the Blue Devils. Trying to get the ball inside right here. Freeze it right here. See him trying to lock up position in here. They want to get that angle. Throw the ball inside. And there's Mr. Hayward. Look at the big, big hand. There he's got the hand up. Trying to get the good angle. And they got the good angle. Once he's inside here, the defense overplays. And that's a simple dunk on the interior. Kalijah had position. They got it to him. Good double team by Brand. Look at Brand run. He's the first guy down the floor, number 42. He hustles every play. So mobile. Haywood back in there. Brand puts it up on Haywood with a rebound. See, Haywood's size again created a problem. Against Lang, he did not have that problem. That was a better matchup for Elton Brand. Capel pulls up for the three. Instead of penetrating, that's the second. Bomb. Capel is hit. Wasn't that Coda? We're way up I'm here. Coda, I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, that was Ed Coda hitting that one. We're way up. Like, I'll tell you, we think we're up at Duke. We are far up here tonight. The Catbird seat. 29-25. Nate James. Big basket by Coda. Grand squares up and charges. He's trying to make things happen that aren't there. And you got to really salute Brendan Haywood. He's doing a heck of a job down in that post. Did you see Haywood turn to the North Carolina bench and point to his head? So that was a smart play on my part, and boy, it was. Coda and the Heels staying in it down by four. By four, Brendan Haywood so far, Dick, eight big points. Yeah, he really has been so effective on the inside. When you look at his development, he's gotten better and better. Hey, Brad, as a big player and as a guy that was certainly an outstanding NBA player, what about the future of a Brendan Haywood? Oh, there's no doubt about it. Brendan Haywood is all upside. He has improved dramatically since last year. His footwork continues to develop. His hands are getting a little better. As you mentioned earlier, they got to get a little bit softer, but they're getting better, and he knows how to finish. Defensively, he is great. He is big. He is mobile. He eats space. You love having that big body on your basketball team, Dick. Elton Brand is going to get a rest, and Domzowski comes in in the pivot for Duke. Maybe right now playing against Coda 101. Coda won that matchup. He won that matchup up in Cameron. Even though Avery scored, he was not able to handle him. It's eight points tonight already for Ed Coda. Coda hits the runner. The game is back to two. Seven nothing run for the Heels, and that stopped by McGetty. I tell you, old McGetty, yo, as they chant down at Cameron Indoor Stadium. I just love him. He's a PT peer. He is a great, great freshman prospect. Coda working around the screen. Had to pick up his dribble, gives it off to Okalaja. They do a great job hedging, stepping out, giving help to one another. See him step out right there? Just beautiful team defense. Well, they really take such pride in that defense. Now you got to give help. Owens dishes it off. Offensive foul on Owens. Got in too deep. And that's what they do exceptionally well. And the leader of the pack in that area is Shane Battier. As you look at Bill Guthridge. Now, perhaps one official will overrule another. Patty A broke the team record. For and they do. Time. And Mike Krzyzewski is going nuts. It was called a charge, and now they've changed it. Carl the Hess. officiating crew, Frank Scagliata, Mike Wood, Carl Hess. Three really outstanding guys yes, put on this game by Fred Barrett. I want to wish Fred nothing but the best for a speedy recovery. Absolutely. Our best wishes go out to him. They're going to give the foul to Nate James on a block. Check it. Now they're calling a double foul. There he is going to the basket. Defensive player is definitely there. I don't think there's any doubt in a charge. So they saw it differently. So Owens will get a charging foul. James will get a blocking foul. 
And both coaches very relaxed. Look at him. Bill Guthrie said, hey, Mike, want to go for dinner? We'll go down to the Siena. They got a great restaurant down here. Another we're, free meal, huh? We're going to have a dinner down here. <laughs> I guarantee they go, it's free. I guarantee they go, it's free. I don't think there's any place in town that Mike or Bill can go that they'd have to pay for a dinner. What's your rule? Mention it twice, wear it once, and it's yours? That's right. 2.53 to go first half. Duke by five. That was an odd kind of call. The officials couldn't agree, so they just... Oh, what a great down. Capel with the easy layup. I'll tell you, Capel, a great basketball IQ. His dad, the coach at Old Dominion. That's a no-no. No switch there. They didn't communicate. You don't see usually Duke break down in a special situation like that. Avery for three with that tremendous range. That hits the shot clock, and it's out of bounds to North Carolina. This game has gone pretty much the way the first game went over Cameron, Dick. Yeah, it really has. They're playing him so tough. Coda's really penetrating well. Dave Hanna's talking to Bill Guthridge. Took over for the Michelangelo coaching. One of the greats ever to grace the sideline, Dean Smith. Under two and a half to go first. Yeah, against Avery. They try to isolate to get help on Coda. Elijah tries to keep it alive and can't, but Getty gets it. Cable from out of the Matha High School gives a great size on a perimeter at 6'7. His three would have tied it. Eddie Green in the lane. Fouled on the way in. That's on Ed Cota. That's his third, and that could be very, very big. They need his leadership and his ball handling skills. Well, you can put this down. He's going out right now. A three-point deficit for North Carolina with 2.12 on the clock. And after his third foul, that is really, really big. Duke will be in the one-and-one. One. See, the one thing that he does so well when you talk about Ed Coda, he takes away the relentless, tenacious pressure of Duke. He doesn't turn the ball over where they get layups because Duke loves to attack on a perimeter and utilize their defense as an offensive weapon. Look at Avery in and out on the second one. He's one of the top 10 free throw shooters in the ACC. Well, that's why Duke's so effective as well. The combination in the backcourt, Avery and Langdon are so outstanding shooting free throws. Now look how close Avery gets up on Curry. He'll really pressure him, not worrying about him going around. Owens, too strong. Carroll Owens really struggling shooting the basketball. James tried the touch pass, tipped and intercepted by Capel. Got to make that open shot. Got to make that. The three wide open won't go. Capel tries to follow and a walk. Owens had the best look he's going to get tonight in a three pointer. He's had a tough time shooting the basketball. He's had a little problem physically, had a groin injury. Owens is 0 for 4 tonight. Championship week continues at 12.30 tomorrow. The South, uh, the Southern Conference Championship at College of Charleston against Appalachian State at the Greensboro Coliseum. Followed at 2.30, the Ohio Valley Conference. Murray State and the winner of the Middle Tennessee State game will come up. If you want more information, ESPN.com, part of the Go Network. Go.com. Hey, Mike, a team to really keep an eye on Charleston. They have a win already over North Carolina. John Cress's club has won 24 in a row. Charleston has been outstanding with Cedric Weber, Danny Johnson, and company. They do it year after year, don't they? Oh, what a job he has done. You want to wish the best to his mom. His mom is very, very ill. It's a four-point game right here under a minute and a half to go. First half, Nate James for three. Too strong, but an offensive rebound. Carrollwell with a miss. The follow by Maggetti. Maggetti really giving him solid minutes off the bench. He certainly will not be the freshman of the year in the ACC. That award will probably go to Chris Williams, deservedly so, Virginia. But he's the best freshman talent in the ACC. First sticker blocked by Domzowski. Duke on the run. Loose ball. Capel ahead of the pack. Bounced it off his foot. Lost it out of bounds. Got the ball back, though. The ball goes back to North Carolina. He thought he had himself an easy layup. What a difference with Coda out of the game for just a minute. Yeah, there's no question. He is their 
stabilizer. He's the guy that really controls tempo, controls the basketball so well for them on a perimeter. And Bill Guthridge is rolling the dice right now. He is putting Coda and those three fouls back out on the court with 54.3 seconds to go in the half. Well, he doesn't want it to get to become a 10-point deficit at halftime. Now, some people would question this. I even think about it. But you know what, Mike? There's no tomorrow. You're playing a team that's number one in America. You're playing a team that's unbeaten in conference play. you got to go with your best people on the floor. And he's got him on the offensive end of the court rather than defensive right now. If there's a, a whistle, he's got a chance to get him out. And he's going to try to get him out with a defensive change. That's Neither team really lighting it up from the free throw line. Right? He's had so many great games as the guy in control here. I mean, I think a lot of people thought this year this team would really struggle big time, yet they've won 22 games. I mean, you just don't lose guys like Carter and Jamison and Shaman Williams and don't suffer a little bit. Ed Cota, number three all-time in assists at North Carolina behind only Kenny Smith and Phil Ford. Pretty good. Oh. Phil Ford, the best that's ever played the game. Kenny Smith played with our partner, Brad Doherty. And if he didn't have that injury in 84, they might have yep. won the national title. 35-31. Duke by four. McGetty to try another three. Short. Curry with a rebound. He got bumped and nobody made the call. Oak Elijah, nice dish off the first sticker. I tell you, first sticker shows me some potential with that side. Nice little touch, 15-footer, but a great look to get him the basketball. Oh, and they're alive here. They smell an upset. They want the W. They want to stop the Dukies from being unbeaten. Duke has not won here since 1991. They have been up by as many as nine. Right now, they lead by only two. And nine times, North Carolina has beaten the number one team in America. Avery kicks it outside. Carroll off the mark. 1.1 second to go and a half. The only other team to beat number ones nine times is our Digger Phelps at Notre Dame. Coming up at the half, sponsored by 7-Up, ESPN News, an upset in the Big Ten, and Maryland rolls again. They have already wrapped up the number two seed in next week's ACC tournament. Maryland has really come on strong. I thought when they lost Obina and Kesey, they would suffer, but they haven't lost since. They've been blowing people basically away. Partisan has played well, and certainly Lonnie Baxter in the ball. And Watkins has come on. They've had a three-headed monster at center, and actually, I think it gives them more of an offensive ball court. I love Terrence Morris. I mean, certainly you ooh and ah, and the potential of Steve Francis is unlimited, but I think Terrence Morris is by far their best all-around player. Although Steve Francis, I got to see him light it up for 32. <laughs> yeah, he, he, he's got brilliant ability. There's no doubt about it. I just think he's learning how to play the game. He's yep. so inexperienced as a player. 1.1 second to go. Carolina has to go 94 feet. Duke putting the pressure on the basketball, making it tough for them to get a look. I always think back to 1992. Yes, and sir. Grant Hill to Lakener against Kentucky, one of the greatest games of all time. Coda! They wave it off. On the sideline. He got it up in time. What a shot. They wave it off. Touch the line. What a momentum builder that would have been to go at halftime with the lead. Holy cow. They would have taken a 36-35 lead. Ed Cota with a prayer that was answered, but he's on the sideline. And there's no doubt he's on the sideline. Even a blind guy like I, like me, can see that from way up here. Oh, all the North Carolina faithful are saying, oh, no, no, no. I can hear Stuart Scott, one of our own, with the Carolina. He's saying, no, no, he's got the swerve bomb, baby. What a shot by Ed Cota. He finished with 10 points in the first half, and he has his club within two of the number one team in the country. Tired of being a loser, Fuzzy. Mm -hmm. what? with us tonight. The game so far, Dick, as advertised. North Carolina's height making a difference inside, especially with Haywood. Yeah, Haywood's really been so effective, not only offensively, where he's had the dunks on the interior, but defensively, he's negated the great offensive ability of Elton Brand. As you watch him on the interior, there he is with the catch from Scott Williams. 
the jam on the other end defensively. Think about this. I mean, Duke's a plus two, and Langdon and Brand, the two All-American candidates, are two for 12. I mean, Mike, you got to feel pretty good if you're on the road and your two stars are two for 12 and you're still plus two. You might have expected it out of Brand because of Haywood's size, but Trajan Langdon, you would think against the North Carolina defense, would get some good looks. I'll tell you one thing. Corey McGetty stepped up, though, got nine points off the bench to make up for that, and Avery was effective. But the key is also, Ed Coda has three. As you and I were talking about off the air, if he gets his fourth early, I mean, that could be lights out and the party over for North Carolina. Take a look at the first half stats here in Chapel Hill. And Duke, which normally shoots well over 50%, hitting only 40 tonight. Three-pointers, only four out of 14. Both teams struggling at the free throw line and Duke after falling behind early in the rebounding battle has come back to actually take the lead that's why they're still up by two the turnovers for North Carolina except for one have not hurt them yeah the turnovers have not led to easy layups which Duke is accustomed to with their pressure that they apply defensively usually force that turnover and that's because of the presence of Ed Coda Ed Coda doesn't allow them just to strip the basketball and go the other way for layups like they do against most clubs remember this Teams leading the nation in scoring, leading the nation in margin of victory. 36 in a row, they've won at home. They've won three consecutive regular season ACC titles, six in the 90s. I mean, this team has been unbelievable. Brad Doherty, obviously North Carolina has elevated its game tonight. They came to play. North Carolina's done a great job, Mike, of keeping the intensity up, matching it pound for pound, pressure for pressure against Duke. What they're going to have to do in the second half, though, is to come out and extend their defense. Duke will start knocking down the outside shot. This young man, Brendan Haywood, has played tremendously. He needs to keep it up. It's all about intensity from here on in. Duke starts the second half of the ball. Langdon, the three, rolls off the front of the rim. They run a play for him, a special play, a little screen, a little curl, and Langdon comes up empty, a little bit out of his range. He's got great range, but he stepped way behind the three. He has hit one of seven shots tonight. Okalaja against the double team, Avery with a reach in. See, I think we should talk about teams that can give problems to, North, to do teams that are very physical. Mike told me this yesterday when I interviewed him. He said we would have problems with teams that are physical, that have ability to play like Stanford. He said also teams like Cincinnati, St. John's, and teams like Michigan State because they're so athletic. Doesn't mean they're not going to beat them. Oh, no, right, exactly. <laughs> But he has respect for everybody that puts sure. the uniform on against him. And that's really also very important in preparing the team. Elijah's been rather quiet offensively. See, I call it respect, but don't fear anyone. Respect your opponent, but don't fear him. Haywood against Brand. He's got that jump hook on that baseline. They really must work on that shot effectively inside. Brad Doherty would know that because Lang shoots it well, and so does Haywood. Brendan Haywood's hit five of seven shots. Langdon has missed seven times from the floor. Brand offensive rebound against Haywood, and Elton Brand gets the bucket. That's the second bucket tonight. That's the first one he's got against Mr. Uh, first one he scored against Brendan Haywood. The last time he scored was against Lang. Duke by a pair. Coda playing with those three fouls. Both clubs trying to play tough, man-to-man -to -man defense, give it help to one another. So what, the five-second count out here. Avery has done a much better job tonight. He is not right in his face as Okalija misses the little layup. Avery burned badly in the first meeting at Cameron Indoor, has backed off the defense a little bit and really contained Coda's penetration. Yeah, you can't allow him to get to the basket. I don't just play off him and let him try to beat you with the perimeter shot. Like Coda had only one assist. Carowell. Now the officials again disagree on the call. One wanted to call it a charge. Instead, they're going to call it a block. Well, the baseline official, Carl Hess, was trying to help his buddy out by giving him the signal that it was a charge. Okalaja picks up the personal. It's his first. Duke not shooting the ball well tonight at all. And I think a lot of that you got to put into the defensive game plan of North Carolina and the way they're executing their game plan. They're not giving them the good open looks. Carowell got a piece of that Oakland shot. 
Avery penetrates past Coda. Tipped his own shot in. William Avery, so strong, so physical for a perimeter player. He's a combination guard. To me, he's an old school guard. He's not just a true point guard, but somebody that can play either, as you see a turnover right there by North Carolina. The sophomore from Augusta, Georgia, has 13 points tonight. There he is with the drive. Now watch him with the second effort on the offensive rebound. Excellent timing. Played in the backcourt with Ricky Moore in high school. Moore, the tremendous player at Connecticut. An unsung hero in their lineup. That was tipped by Lang. Somehow it gets through anyway, and McGetty comes up with it. Nice fake by McGetty. Off balance, misses the shot, Lang with a rebound. Carolina down by four. Not going to see many transition layups by North Carolina. Hey, will jump up. I'll tell you, it's a double team. The star is being born here. I know he's been a solid player, but if he plays like he's playing tonight, he becomes a star. He becomes a Brad Doherty. Haywood, who averages 12 and a half, has a dozen, and Langdon draws the foul on Capel. Great job to get him up in the air and draw the personal fouls. Shane Battier on the sideline with that ankle injury. Now look at the ball entered inside. Now take a look at the spacing. See right there, you got great spacing on inside. Freeze that. See right here, look at the spacing in this area. He's got places to operate. As you watch him on the inside now, 15 to 17 feet apart, and there's that nice little jump hook with a good touch. Oh, does he have a future? I don't think he knows how good he can be. He's going to be a very rich man someday, Mr. Patrick. Trajan Langdon hits the free throw. At one point this year, he had become the ACC's all-time leader, but then started struggling at the line. Yeah, instead of going like seven for seven, he would go six for seven as he misses that one. <laughs> misses that one, and he had, uh, by our calculations, he needed to make something like 26, 27 in a row in order to claim that all-time championship, but that's probably the thing that's furthest from his mind right now. Missed another one on that line. Two out of three from a guy who is 85.6 this year. At one point, he was over 90. I'll tell you, Mike, is those, are those signs that it's going to be a long, long finish here and a long night for Duke? I mean, that is unheard of. Trajan Langdon going 0 for 2 on that line. Well, he hit the first one, so he was officially 1 for one 3. Two. And he's hit one out of seven field goals tonight. Still, Duke is up by 30, playing without the injured Shane Battier, or three without the injured Shane Battier. I've done so many Duke games this year when they've been up by 30. They've been up by 30 on almost everyone, basically, other than St. John's and Cincinnati. And they're going to come from behind and we're down 10 against Georgia Tech in the second half. Georgia Tech played them beautifully. That ball got away from Avery, and it's out of bounds. Take a look at the margin of victory. Unbelievable. They are at 25-7, which is eighth all time. Take a look. How many times UCLA shows up there? UCLA up there. That was probably during the Lou Alcinda era. It was certainly during the John Wooden era. <laughs> Ten national titles in 12 years. The Wizard of Westwood. Capel working on the lane that forced the shot. Avery with a rebound. See, Avery gives you another dimension. He's a rebound as a guard. He's an old school guard. He just plays. Misses the three. Carowell offensive rebound. Wheels into a double team. Grant against Haywood. No bucket but a foul. I'll tell you one thing. He did a great job there to draw that contact to go to the foul line, Elton Brand. And that's three on Haywood. Carroll brings the street game to the Duke uniform. He's from out of the streets of St. Louis. A tough kid. Very physical. There he is with the little jump hook in the lane. And now you're going to watch Elton Brand. Is he trying to come back with his body? A little principle of verticality if he makes contact? Carroll now three out of three from the line. If the Sports Illustrated article, if I'm remembering it correctly, Carowell said his neighborhood in St. Louis was so tough that the seven out of ten guys he played with are dead. Yeah, he did before age 22. He did say that in that article that they wrote on Duke. And certainly Duke getting lots of national publicity. ESPN magazine had a feature on Brand earlier this year. Maybe this Carolina team can pull out a big one tonight. I'll tell you, Brad, he was also outstanding in New York City when they won the NIT championship. He's been a little up and down. He's got to work on his hands a little more. And you got to get in the gym and work with him a little bit. Come back to your alma mater. Well, I sneak around and we work on the footwork just a little bit. He's getting better. He's going to be a great player, Dick. 
42-35. Duke by five over Carolina. Oh, you couldn't beg, borrow, or steal a seat in this place tonight. I was on a campus today with my wife, daughter, walking to campus. This afternoon, we were all over Chapel Hill, went to Carmichael, and so many people kept coming up. You got any extra tickets? You got any extra? I got to make a lot of money today, Mike. You don't need any more. <laughs> I got to catch my guy, Darity. He's got all those dealerships. He doesn't need any more either. I'm still waiting for my car. He hasn't delivered it yet. <laughs> yeah. Keep waiting. <laughs> Approaching 15 minutes in this game. Capel. Carolina spreading the floor a little bit. See, I would try to get the angle and get Haywood. I would really try to make Grant play him. Got to bring the ball over, swing it, get a good angle for that entry. Shot clock down to four. Excellent defense by Duke on that trip. Yeah, not a good possession right there by North Carolina. I thought they should have taken advantage of the inside play of Hayward. Maggetti nearly knocked away. See, that frustrates big people when they're so effective and they don't touch the ball inside. Maggetti for three. Shooting the ball too quickly right now, Maggetti. He's got to get it in there. Offensive set. A dangerous pass. pass, and it's picked off on the tip by Langdon. Not a good look, especially with the athletic ability of a guy like Maggetti. Will Guthridge knows that's not a pass he'd like to see. Ten turnovers by the heels. They can't afford that style of play. Grand follow-up. That's impossible. That shot for him to attack. Well, Maggetti did everything he could to keep it alive, and here comes Okalaja against Carrollwell. Oh, Kalijah behind the back. Carowell will be called for the foot. I want to ask Brad this. Hey, Brad, I know uh, uh, when you played down in a post inside, I got to believe it's frustrating to a seven-footer who's effective and who's dominating and knows that he can score and he doesn't touch the basketball. You're exactly right, Dick, especially a young basketball player who's playing well, and when you go away from him, he kind of gets lost in the shuffle. You got to keep getting that basketball to Brendan Haywood down the block. He's and playing extremely well. If you don't allow him to continue to grow throughout the game, at the end of the game he won't be around well my feeling is until they can stop it it's the same in football for years Vince Lombardi when he was coaching said we're running to the right baby and giving the ball to the Hornig or whoever until they stop it Coda for three he had hit two of those before Duke would love to get Langdon on track yeah, he's a guy that can knock down two quick jumpers and blow a game open. Switches to the left hand, missed it, knocked out of bounds by Eftemoff, out to Duke. Eftemoff gave him a little presence inside in the first half, made a great play on the interior when he banked one off the glass. Missed the first 18 games, was ineligible. I could never understand the logic of his ineligibility, and it's too lengthy to go into it right now. <laughs> Brand backing in on Haywood. Got it. Nice play right there by Elton Brand, getting the ball in deep. He's had 14 double doubles this year. He's got another one tonight. 10 points, 11 boards. Langdon. Coda had to let him go with those three fouls, knocked out of bounds to Duke. The lead is up to seven, and North Carolina has to be very, very careful. Duke can really lay ten on you in a hurry. You watch Brand on the inside right now against Haywood. Just the one time he was effective, got the ball up quickly. So mobile inside, so agile for a big player. He was a tight end in high school up at Peekskill, New York. Remember this, no player ever left Duke early. In terms of a Mike Krzyzewski era, when you think about the great players, Johnny Dawkins, Danny Ferry, guys like Christian Leitner and Grant Hill, but rumors are swirling that Elton Brand may leave early. I think he's made for college. I well, think he's made for college. He didn't Mike tell you yesterday times have changed? Yeah, Mike said yesterday in her interview that times have changed drastically with outside people involved with young people. Really, some of the problems that exist in college basketball. I'm not convinced he's leaving early when you talk to him. I think he loves Duke University. William Avery told us he wasn't thinking about leaving a couple of weeks ago. Capel. Carolina needed that puck. Jason Capel's capable of knocking down that trifecta. He has five. McGetty nearly lost it. He has a tendency to get a little bit out of control. Coda back the other way. Oh, Elijah blocking foul. Jason Cable came out of a great program. St. John's a prospect hall. He had an outstanding year. 
They're getting a player from Damascus. Morgan Wu, one of the fine coaches of all time in high school. Joe Forte will be coming here playing for North Carolina. A big time scorer rated very high by Bob Gibbons in his all star report. Look at Phil Ford on its side. Line, greatest point guard I've ever witnessed in college basketball. I mean, flat out on a college level. I'm talking the NBA. Phil Ford was magical as a point guard. He was born to run the four corners. Wow, you waved the white handkerchief. It was over when he spread the court and Dean went to the four corners. First sticker has played well in the few minutes he's had. Missed that shot. I remember Dean Smith telling me even he didn't like the four corners, but it was part of basketball and you had to run it the best you could. Langdon with a travel. Trajan Langdon is struggling right now. He might have to come out for about a minute, sit him down, bring him back on the floor. As you look at Mike and his brain trust, Quinn Snyder, a leading candidate, or a guy that certainly would be a tremendous candidate for the San Diego State job. I'd hire him in a minute. The lead is now seven. Coda got past Avery. Avery has done a sensational job defensively. First ticker missed that. Coda tipped it in. And he got it with the offensive rebound. He and Avery have that unique ability to convert off offensive rebounds for guard. Coda averages more than four and a half rebounds a game. The best rebounding point guard in the history of North Carolina basketball. Every time it looks like Duke's going to get away from him, North Carolina comes back and makes a little run and gets right back into the game. 46-41 with 12-26 to go in the ball game. But you just have the feeling, don't you, Dick, that the heels are hanging on by their fingernails. Yeah, they're hanging it. They're avoiding, which really is big tonight as you watch Coda with the offensive rebound. They're really avoiding the spurt of Duke. And Duke is such a great spurt team all year long. They haven't been able to put one of those spurts on. When you think of what Duke has achieved, though, their record is unbelievable. Margin of victory, just winning three consecutive ACC regular season titles. I don't understand the logic how they don't get a trophy. I mean, I want to take a collection up and give them a trophy. I mean, you win the regular season, Mike. That is a test of, of, of stamina, durability, longevity the entire year. I mean, that deserves a trophy if that's, they give it for the tournament. That's the reason they started the tournament, Dick. Yeah. Langdon with a runner. There it is. Got it. Two, there it is. A two. If he gets going, baby, watch out. The little curl move. They set that up in the timeout. And that's not easy for a guy who's right-handed to turn that way and hit the shot. And he does that exceptionally well. He's got the quick, quick release, squares his body, and he knocks it down. Oh, Kalijah for three. Lank. That's not a normal Okalaja shot. I mean, that was Brick City, USA. You could build a lot of buildings knocking up those kind of... Numbers. That was a Dick Vitale three, yeah, if was, I ever saw one. That was really one of mine. I don't have that kind of range. I couldn't reach the back one. Okalaja only two out of eight from the floor. Joining Langdon, struggling shooting. Grand isolated on Haywood. Kicks it out. Carowell can hit the three and does. Yes, sir. See, they have that weapon. Duke has that unbelievable weapon that is so special in breaking games open. The trifecta. It's the biggest lead. 51-41. Coda trying to counter. Remember, at stake, Duke trying to be the first team to go 16 and zip since they expanded the 19 in 1992. Eftemoff kicks it outside before he got rid of it. I believe he was fouled by Burgess. I was talking to Bill Brill today, one of the writers, and I said this to him because I know he does the seedings for Sports Illustrated. Think about this. If Duke were to lose here now and lose in the tournament, would that affect their number one seed in the East? We're going to watch him like under the basket pop right out for the open shot. Now watch him right now. Set up his guy. Freeze it. See, right here. Now he's going to set him up and come right out and knock down the jumper. There he is, the same exact play. He's in a rhythm right now. He's a great rhythm shooter. Haywood hits the free throw. North Carolina's had to come back and rally from behind in their last three, three wins. There were wins over Virginia, North Carolina State, and Wake Forest. They had to come from behind. But tonight, they're playing a little bit different caliber of club in terms of falling behind. They've cut the lead to nine as we approach the halfway mark in the second half. Here Langdon feels it. He wants the ball now. And they want it down. 
Durham, baby. They want to celebrate down in Durham tonight. Maggette against Lang leans into him. Got his own rebound. Missed it again. Grant. Stuffed by Haywood and a whistle. Cuckoo, such a great job on the offensive boards. Really attacking the glass. That means you're playing aggressive basketball. Whenever you're re winning a rebounding battle, that means you're playing aggressive basketball. I think there are three phases to being aggressive. Number one, when you force turnovers. Number two, with steals. And number three, when you offensively rebound. Foul was on Okalaja. It will be his second. You can't allow them second and thirds, especially when you line up with size like Lang and certainly Haywood, and you look at Okalaja, you can't give them three opportunities. Dick, sometimes when you get a player hurt like Duke has tonight with Battier, Mike Krzyzewski can turn to his club and use that as a motivation, saying somebody else has got to step up. You've all got a rebound. Well, you know, that really, that's really true. That can help you in a one-game scene, but usually in a long term, you miss that special sure. play. Oh, man, 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 man. Dakota, tough pass for Haywood. And Langdon got a hand on it, knocked out of bounds. They say it was Haywood. It looked like Langdon was the guy who touched it last. Didn't have the good angle for that entry. Tried to force that inside. As you look at the former North Carolina assistant for years, took over last year, took that journey to the Final Four before they lost to Utah. Hey, what about Utah? They're just on fire. They blitzed New Mexico today. Avery with a killer three. He has 18 points. And all at once, Carolina staring, staring at a 14-point deficit. And it's been the three-point shot that's got him that lead. Okalaja, good head fake to get three in and out of the jump. Danger time right now, by Total danger time. Langdon wants the ball. Okalaja with the rebound. Got a four on two. Capel misses the wide open three. Knocked out of bounds. Out to Duke. Boy, the Carolina fans and Bill Guthridge didn't like that call. I'll tell you, Duke is really doing a great job now getting the good look at the trifecta and making it happen. Avery Carrowell and Langdon have knocked down big, big threes. And North Carolina not making the big shots as they have so often in the past. Brand, great fake the basket and a foul. Oh, that was a super up and under move on the interior. That's why he is the 3M man. He's magical. He's absolutely marvelous. He's magnificent, Mr. Brand. Watch him inside with the up and under move. We're going to see him right now going against the seven foot and the space eater inside. He freezes up, and there he is on the interior. What a nice fake. Look at the fake right there. Great ball fake to get free and then square his body and lay it on the glass. And that's four on Haywood. Brand goes to the line, and he's made all six free throw tries tonight. Make it seven straight. 15 points and 13 boards, and Haywood has to sit down. The heels are in a lot of trouble. This team in America, there's no question about it, the Duke Blue Devils. They are going to be the team, I believe, cutting the nets down, winning the national championship. There's only one team that can beat them, Mr. Patrick, and that's the Duke Blue Devils. If they don't come to play, which I cannot see happening because they're a focused, mature group, I think if they play their A game, there is nobody that can beat this one. Brand now against first sticker is physically no match for him, but he missed that shot. Owens with a rebound. How sweet would this be for Duke? They haven't won here since 91. They would go 16-0 for the first time in the history of the ACC, having already wrapped up the regular season title going into the tournament. Nice look into Lang on the inside. Also, 31-1 in two years in the ACC. My friends, that is special. Avery misses the long three. Lang with a rebound at Carrollwood. 7.35 and counting. Mike Patrick, Dick Vitale, Brad Doherty, glad you could join us on the deuce. He said to me yesterday in the interview, I asked him, compared his club to the 92 club, he said the 92 team would beat this team. He said, but maybe by the end of the year. Now, if this club wins the national championship, there might be a different story. He's a super. There's no question William Avery and Trajan Langdon are the premier backcourt in America. Avery with a fadeaway. He now has 20 points. And it's gotten awfully quiet in here. Silence the crowd big time. Owens trying to penetrate. 
and was tripped as he went down the lane. They're so professional about the way they play and the way they practice. Watch them practice yesterday, the efficiency and how they execute and really just come to play is so unique and so special. And above, who start. And what they do is they take up territory. They take up a lot of space. And so in blocking, you not only have to rebound, you have to block out first. We're doing a much better job of that now than the first time we played North Carolina. He's 100% right, Mike. You watch the way they've been blocking out tonight so effectively. And Dick, the one thing about Duke that Mike Krzyzewski said at the beginning of this season, no matter how good they were then, that they were so young that they had tremendous potential to get better, and they have gotten better. Well, they've gotten better in every phase of the game. And he's got, he talked yesterday about the swagger. He said the team in 92 had a confident swagger about them that I didn't think we had, especially early in the year. Mm -hmm. He said, but now I think we have it. And that swagger is a positive where they really go out believing they're going to win. Brad Doherty is with us tonight. And Brad, did you think you would ever, in your wildest dreams, see Duke have such a rebounding advantage tonight? No. I never would have thought that. North Carolina has a very good rebounding basketball team. But the thing that's impressive about Duke is their focus. They continue to maintain their focus, run their offense. And I'll tell you, they, might, they have to be one of the most well-conditioned clubs in the United States of America. These guys run, jump, and play. Look at Elton Brand. He's still out there hustling up and down the floor. He's played almost every minute of this ball game. I'll tell you, Brad, the guys that really impressed me don't get a lot of notoriety. McGetty is such an athlete. Carowell, Avery. I mean, these guys are big-time performers. We hear about Langdon and certainly Grant, but McGetty's been sensational all night. McGetty gets 11 rebounds tonight, Dick. He comes off the bench, does a tremendous job, also tosses in nine points. Brand had 13 rebounds. Carowell and Langdon have combined for 13 rebounds. Look at this unmolested layup. I mean, get the bus for North Carolina. This baby's over. This baby's over. They're going to be 16 in zip. There is no stopping them tonight. North Carolina does not have the explosiveness and the kind of defense that can get them back in this game. They have just worn the heels down. Even playing without the injured Shane Battier. And Oak Elijah hits the three. Too little, too late. Adamola has seven points. I mean, you look at it right now. The ACC tournament should come down to the showdown. Maryland against North Duke. You see frustration. Of course, if form holds, these two teams will meet again in the semifinals. Carolina seeded third, Duke first. And again, if form holds, Maryland and Duke will play in the finals. I think there's no doubt those two heavyweight teams have been definitely head and shoulders this year in a year when the conference has been mediocre. I mean, the RPI ratings got them up there very high, right behind the Big Ten. But, Mike, it's all been because of Duke and Maryland oh, that the top heavy. is up. Absolutely. Duke still hustling on defense, still getting the good shots offensively. We're down to four minutes and seven seconds in counting. It's Duke by 18 big ones. Going to spread the court now. I think this guy's oh. going to be a star. Hey, Brad Darwin. What about him at the next level? Oh, Dick, no doubt about it. This young man is outstanding. Coach K loves this type of player. And when he got McGetty, he was extremely excited. 6'6 six, six slashing type player who handles the basketball and, as you see, is very explosive. I hate to keep talking about the next level, but there's no doubt about it. Three years from now, this young man will be a superstar in the NBA. Brad, I'll tell you one thing. This guy's playing 17 minutes a night. When he gets 30 minutes a night, Mike Krzyzewski yesterday, his eyes lit up when I talked to him about McKinney. I mean, he knows it. He feels it right now. He knows he's in great shape. And we had a technical foul call. Was it for grabbing the rim? We, we can't tell from way up here where we're sitting. I mean, we're in the right field corner, baby. Expect to see Roberto Clemente out here, don't <laughs> Albert Bell is playing right field now go. for the Orioles. Albert Bell is going to hit about 65 homers this year. And hanging the technical on the rim. was for hanging on the rim, so Oak Elijah will get another. You can hang on the rim to protect yourself, but that's the only reason. Hey, our stat guy, Tony Britt, does a great job, and he gave me some numbers on Mike Krzyzewski. They're unbelievable. His 24th season, 533 wins. I mean, 215 weeks they've been in the top 25, including the last 52 weeks. Unbelievable. 
say in the last 10 years as a preeminent basketball team? I'll tell you, Mike, they remind me so much of the UNLV team, Larry Johnson, Stacey Augman, that great athletic team. I think they have so many similarities with the players they have. And that was the team that Duke ultimately beat in the semifinals and then went on and marched and won the national championship. And that was the game where nobody gave them a chance. It exactly. was going to be a Vegas walkover. And yeah, it didn't happen. Because Vegas was undefeated at the time. People were ready to say that the Vegas team was going to be one of the greats of best all ever. time, best ever. And remember, the year prior, they had beaten Duke by 30 in the NCAA tournament in a championship game. We have 3.41 to go here. Again, if you join this late, Shane Battier held out because of a mild high ankle sprain. But he was struggling two days ago, and Duke made the decision that even though this would take him to 16 and 0, it would be their 24th straight victory. All those great numbers. I think they made the right decision because if you get Battier hurt again, maybe you lose him for the ACC tournament, maybe you lose him for the NCAA tournament, and it's not worth it. Well, Mike said yesterday in the interview we did that number one their priority is to cut the Nets down for a national championship. He said we did not have a goal to go unbeaten in the ACC. Our goal was to win the ACC regular season, win the ACC tournament, and win the national title, our number one priority. But I'll tell you what, another priority that went unspoken, win a game in this building. Right, psychologically, it just makes you feel a little better for the future. They're doing anything they want right now, baby. This has become an M&M or a mismatch, an NC or no contest. Elton Brand buries that one. He has 17 points, has come on strong. The lead is up to 20. Even a lot of help on Haywood now on the inside. See, if you don't make that shot against Duke, you're in big, big trouble. you got to make shots. Curry has been dreadful from outside. He shot 15% this year. 15%, you got to stop shooting, don't you? Maggetti blocked by Haywood. And a whistle. Think about the achievements of Mike Krzyzewski. Seven ACC regular season titles in his career. Six in the 90s. As a look at Quinn Snyder as his MBA as well as his law degree. Good looking guy as well. And what a tactician. Very bright in practice. I'll tell you one thing. Mr. Rick Bay of San Diego State. If you can hire him, get on that phone and get it done, big fella. Quinn, he, Quinn is ready. He He's, will bring excitement down in that area. Haywood fouls out. He was a tremendous offensive pr uh, presence tonight for North Carolina. Did not get enough help. Yeah, he really did. He played so well on the inside. Really did. Hey, Brad, you know a little bit about Quinn Snyder. What are your feelings about Snyder in terms of being a head coach? Oh, uh, I would hire him in a heartbeat, Dick. Quinn Snyder's a bright, well-managed young guy. Does a lot of good things with the X's and O's. Has paid his dues. He's going to be a super, super head coach. And then it would open the door for Wojciechowski to become a member of that staff. And then the next guy in line for a job would be Johnny Dawkins, who's getting ready. I mean, we got it all pegged in. You know, if you and Brad just pull your checkbooks, you can buy a school and hire all these guys at once. No, we're going to be like Michael Jordan. He's going to go buy the Hornets and hire Dean Smith as the president. How about Phil Ford? Phil Ford has been here for a long time, very much in, in the mold of Carolina history. A long time assistant. I think Phil Ford has proven he can do a great job at the next level. He, he's turned down jobs, Brad. He's had opportunities that he has not jumped to. Uh, Brad, you know Phil really well. He's had a chance to go several places, but really has elected to stay here. Yeah, Phil has, has decided to stay here and pay his dues. He had a couple of huge job offers last year. He's doing the correct thing, though. He's paying his dues. He coaches the JV team here. He does a tremendous job. He also will be a great head coach someday. He loves the Carolina Blue. All you guys love the Carolina Blue. Right. I want to know, are you crying a little bit on the inside? Tell the truth, Brad. Uh, it's, you cry it's, digging, it's digging at me just a little bit, uh, Dick. This is a great Duke basketball team and, and North Carolina's come out and give it a great effort they just cannot continue to match the intensity throughout the depth and it's starting to hurt them in the, in the second half simple case just not good enough talent wise the worst margin of defeat that North Carolina has sustained here at the Smith Center was against Temple back in 88 when they lost by 17 points you talk about a guy who hung around and paid his dues Bill Guthridge loyal to the end 
for North Carolina and Dean Smith and was rewarded with a head coaching job. And all he's done in his first two years is win more games than any coach in the history of the NCAA in his first two years. 56 and 11. He rewarded them with an excellent performance. Absolutely. You know, it's amazing as we look at the score here tonight. This was a close game until about five minutes ago. Yes, it was. And it's all of a sudden, boom, bang, it's over. Some real surprises today in college basketball. Ohio State gets beat. As you take a look at here at some of the NCAA coaching histories. Legends. Every case. Well, legends. Ben Carnivale, a Hall of Famer. Take a look at these names right here. Some outstanding records. But, you know, you think today, showing college hoops again, Wisconsin gets beat at home by Michigan. Ohio State gets beat by Penn State, showing you the depth for that Big Ten, the best conference in the land. I mean, there's a perfect example. Penn State and Michigan on the bottom, and yet they beat two of the top clubs in the league. I'm really impressed. Utah wins again today. Blows out New Mexico. Andre Miller having a phenomenal year. Carrollwell getting high fives as he goes to the bench. They'll be celebrating tonight down at Durham. You can bet on that. The Cameron Crazies will welcome them back to that campus. A nice little journey, eight miles apart. The best rivalry in all of college sports. I don't care what you're talking about. The emotion, the intensity, the electricity, and what occurs in this matchup is so special. To add to it, as we take a look at the Folger storyline, this will be the longest winning streak, 24 straight games in Duke's history. storied basketball history. They had matched the 23 over two seasons. This is the longest in a single season and the longest all time. Duke with that huge rebound advantage as we look at the Folger storyline. Avery with 22 big points. Coda was held to 12, and Avery deserves credit for his defense because Coda only got three assists. But Coda's not going to kill you with his scoring. You'll let him get whatever points he wants. It's his assist that set up other players. Well, you know, Coda was not able to handle him in both games. He got 43 points in both games. I'll lay this on you, Mike, and you may not agree, and Brad may not agree. I'll give you guys the rest of the conference, and very rarely this can happen, where I'll give you the rest of the conference. You take any five you want. I'll take Duke, and we'll be. You. Well, somebody else said, how many would Duke be favored by if you played him against an all-star team? That's unbelievable. Playing it, and I'll tell you what, I'll go, on. I'll go one step further, and I will give you the nation. I will give you the country. You line up with your Andre Millers, your Jason Terrys, whoever you want. I'll take Duke, and they will beat that team. This team is absolutely sensational. It's a shame we can't set up that game and have it on ESPN. Yeah, I coach that. I coach the Dukies that. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, can't have that albatross hanging around their neck. You got to let Mike Shashevsky coach him. He's the one that got him here. Hey, Brad, what do you think of that? I think, I think that's quite a task. Are you saying it within the conference or throughout the, uh, the country as far as picking my team? You can pick them throughout the country. That's Whoa. how I, I really give you five in the country, and I can still beat you with this team. Man. And I would have to probably put Steve Francis out there. Maybe give me Terrell McIntyre. We'll give you a, well, we'll give you the country. So we'll give you Andre Miller. I'd too. take Miller. I'd put Miller down. I'd go with guards. I'd pick Jason Terry. Bring all those guards out. Maybe put a couple of big guys in the back. We'll but give you. A, it still would be a tough task. To hey, beat hey, Brad. I just figured out why Dick thinks that Duke would beat that All Star team because Dick is going to coach the All Star team. That's exactly <laughs> right. As long as Dick's not coaching, they got a chance. <laughs> You're right about that. That's why I'm up in TV where I haven't lost a game in 20 years. <laughs> and he had an interesting story yesterday, Mike. A lot of people are unaware of. If we could see his ring, his ring has significance. He got a gift from his wife, and his gift from his wife was the ring of the Duke University National Championship stole into his West Point ring. And he said he wears it because it really represents what he believes in. The principles he learned at West Point and coaching at Duke. And he said that ring is very special to him. Bill Guthridge going to clear his bench. Roy Williams' son comes in. Scott Williams, a beautiful young guy. Coach Guthridge making sure his starters get uh, the applause they deserve for a great regular season. And also that his bench guys get a chance to come in here and play a little bit. Three, Justin Hallback. And Mike Krzyzewski is doing the same thing as he's going to clear his bench. That's Justin Caldback. And there will be a celebration on that short eight-mile bus ride back to Durham, North Carolina. Yeah, it really will be, Mike. There's no question about it. 
Coming up next, live coverage of RPM tonight by Reese Davis. We'll take a look at NASCAR testing and the NHRA from Phoenix. Seventy-eight to fifty-six. I'll tell you, look at McGetty's line. A double-double steps up big because they play without Shane Battier, and he gives them some positive minutes. Dick, this was a game when we came here that we knew had the possibility of being a blowout. But history was so much on North Carolina's side, having had such a great streak against Duke in this building. Well, also the fact that they played him so tough at Cameron Indoor Stadium without a Jason Cable, with Cody getting hurt, played him right. I mean, the last three minutes, it's anybody's basketball game. And that size, you had to believe also that you would might have thought Duke might have gotten a little tight. Well, look at this. Layups. Nobody really stepping into the Duke will become only the eighth team ever to go undefeated through the Atlantic Coast Conference season. And since they have gone to nine teams, the first ever to go 16 and 0. Remember, they were 15 and 1 last year, 31 and 1 in their last 32 regular season games in the ACC. Mike Krzyzewski knew he had a special team, and they are just that. They will go into the ACC tournament with this magnificent record having won 24 straight games this year. And my friends, let me tell you this. It's only going to get better and better if you're a Duke fan. And if you're anti-Duke, you're going to eat your heart out as you look at their streaks here, 36 in a row at home. With that recruiting class next year, 6'11", remember the name, Casey Sanders. Remember the name, Michael Dunleavy, Jason Williams. You see a score inside. I mean, they're getting blue-chip superstars rated in the top 10 in America that come to Duke. And they may even get Carlos Boozer from out of Alaska. It's down to UCLA, St. John's, and Duke. Almost sounds unfair, doesn't it? Oh, it's, he's got a roller. I mean, Bobby Knight said it the best. His former mentor said, Mike Krzyzewski today has got the program that we all really want to emulate and number one, and he's right now the best coach in America. That came out of Bobby Knight. Absolutely. The program is squeaky clean. There will never be a hint of a problem with this program, not while Mike Krzyzewski is there, and he is one of the great things about college basketball. He agreed with me yesterday in the interv interview, Mike. He said, when I said to him, Mike, you fit the puzzle so perfectly at Duke. I said, I'm not saying this is criticism, but I really believe in certain situations you wouldn't be as successful as you are at Duke because of the kind of kids and the kind of program. And he said, you're 100% right. Is that the first time he's ever said that to you? Yeah, first time he's <laughs> ever told me I've been right. He also told me he can't wait to get that uh, hip surgery taken care of. And he's got yeah. up on his, in his room, 6-2 Vital in tennis. And he said, I'm going to make you pay for that big time. Well, the fact that you're bragging about beating a guy who needs a hip replacement. I drop shot him too. I really yeah, dropped shot him. That was really good. <laughs> Okalija gets a standing ovation, 10.7 boards. His shot was off tonight, but I'll tell you what. He's had a great they, senior year. They knew at the beginning of the year that Okalija really had to step up for this ball club, and he has been their best player offensively and defensively. He's really had a solid senior season. Certainly will get a lot of votes for the ACC. Crowd wanted Scott Williams to shoot the ball. Duke goes 16 and zip, baby. That is special. Any way you cut it, a phenomenal regular season. And now the march is the ACC tournament and ultimately the national championship. And overall, the number one team in the country is 29 and 1. Once again, our final score. Duke 81, North Carolina 61. For Dick Vitale and Brad Darty, this is Mike Patrick. Good night from Chapel Hill. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com, part of the Go Network, go.com.